In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain and the range of a function. So, two things. We're going to look at how to find the domain and range when you're looking at the graph, and then we're going to talk about how to find the domain when you're looking at the equation form of the function. And so, first recall that the domain is the set of all the first coordinate, which is usually x, the set of all the x values, and the range is the set of all the second coordinate, which is typically y, so the set of all the y coordinates. So keep that in mind. You need to know that domain refers to all of your x's and range refers to all of your y's. For this first example, we want to find the domain of this graph. So this graph consists of just ordered pairs. So it's just random points. I have one, two, three, four, five random points here. And so anytime you have a graph that is just um, basic points, then when you write the domain, you want to write it in set notation. That's what they brace, and you want to list out all the x values. You always want to read your graph from left to right, so that's from smallest to biggest. So your smallest x value on this graph will be here at this point, negative 3. Then your next x value will be here at this point, which is negative 1. Then here's the next one at 0, and then here's another one at 2, and another one at 4. And so your domain will look like this. You want to do the same thing with the range, except now you want to read the graph from bottom to top. That's from smallest to biggest. So what is the smallest y on this graph? Where well, here is the smallest y value, which is negative 4. Then the next y value would be here at 1. Then you have another y value here at 3 with that point. And then the last one at 4. You have two y values of 4. So your range will look like this, which consists of the points negative 1, I mean negative 4, 1, 3, and 4. And so that's how you will write your domain and range whenever you have just um, ordered pairs. For example, 2, we want to find the domain and range of this graph. So this, is, this graph is different from the last one. The last one was only points or ordered pairs. And so we wrote them as a set. But when it's not an ordered pair, when it's not just ordered pairs, when the graph is connected, then when you write your domain and range, you want to write it in interval notation. So you also want to read your graph from left to right and bottom to top. So for the domain, the x's you want to read from left to right. What is the smallest x value on this graph? So this d stands for domain. I forgot to mention that in the last example. But what is the smallest x value on this graph? The smallest x value is here. This is where the graph starts, which is negative 3. And since that is an open hole, you will not include negative 3. So you'll put a parenthesis around negative 3. Then the graph keeps going. Then the graph keeps going. It continues on here. It continues on here. And then it continues on here. And this arrow means it keeps going on and on and on like the Energizer Bunny. So in an x direction, the graph does not stop. So that means it goes on to infinity. And so you always put parentheses around infinity. And so that's how you will write your domain. Now, for the range, you do the same thing, but now you're reading the graph from bottom to top. So what is the smallest y value on this graph? Well, the smallest y value is here. That's the point negative 3, negative 2. So your smallest y value is negative 2. Again, since that's an open circle, you put a parentheses instead of a bracket. And then the graph continues to go up. It stays still here, but then it continues to go up in a positive direction. So that would be negative 2 to infinity. That will be the range of this graph. And so again, when it's not just ordered pairs, when the graph is actually connected, then you want to write your domain and range in interval notation. This graph is an upside down parabola, or it's a U shape, but upside down. And we want to know the domain and range here. Again, these are connected points, so you're going to write your domain and range in interval notation. So if I start with the domain, I'm going to ask myself, what is the smallest x value on this graph? So it's important to know that on a parabola, even though these are going down, the further they, the arrows go down, the wider it gets. So it's not just going straight down, it's going out. And because it's going out, that means your smallest x value on your graph will be negative infinity. And because it's going continuing to go out and get wider as it goes down, your biggest x value will be infinity. So your domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, what is the smallest y value on the graph? Because the arrows go down, that means it continues to go down, down, so it can't go no more. Like say it's going to hell, that means it's going to go and it's not going to stop. Um, 
So that means your smallest y value would be negative infinity. And then what is the biggest y value on this graph? Where does the graph stop? It stops right here. That's the point two comma four. So that's a y value of four. And because that graph is actually, because that point is actually on the graph, then you will include the four by putting a bracket around it. And so that's how you will find the domain and range of this parabola. So whenever you want to find the domain and the function is in equation format, then there's three different categories you want to consider. The first category I like to call one line of stuff. That's when it's just one line of variables, uh, exponents, and symbols. Then your domain is always going to be all real numbers. It's whenever you start getting things that have restrictions where you have to consider other things and you have a different domain. So the second category is fractions. You have restrictions with fractions. So your restrictions with fractions is that the denominator cannot be zero. So you have to consider that. In the second category, you're gonna have a different domain. And then in the third category is when you have radicals. Whenever you have radicals, what's underneath the root cannot be negative. Because when you get a negative underneath the square root, you're dealing with an imaginary number and that doesn't give you a point on the graph because it's not a real number. So let's look at an example from each of these three categories. So example four, we wanna find the domain of f of x equal two x squared plus three x. So this function actually fits into that category of one line of stuff. That means it's just one line of numbers, variables, exponents. There are no fractions, there are no radicals, so there are no restrictions. And so your domain is simply gonna be all real numbers. And so you write all real numbers as negative infinity to positive infinity. So whenever you have just one line of stuff, and that's a D, I know it looks a little crazy, but whenever you have one line of stuff, your domain will always be all real numbers. So example five, we wanna find the domain of f of x equal x minus two over three x plus one. So this one fits into the category of fractions, and when you have fractions, the denominator cannot be zero. So what you wanna do is you wanna find the values that make the denominator zero. So take 3x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve, and that's the denominator, solve it for x. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get 3x equal to negative 1, and then divide by 3, you get x equal to negative 1 third. And so your domain will be all real numbers except negative 1 third. So the way you write that, so you could put a line through it to let you know that it can't equal negative 1 third. But the way you write that is that will be your domain will be negative infinity to negative one third with the parentheses because negative one third is not included. Union negative one third to infinity. So this is another way of saying all real numbers except negative one third. So all the numbers from here to here and from here to here. So all of the real numbers except negative one third. So that would be your domain. In example six, we wanna find the domain of the square root of x plus three. So this fits into that third category of roots or radicals. We have a radical, what's underneath it cannot be negative because you'll get an imaginary number out. So what you wanna do is take the radican. So this is called the radican. That's the part that's underneath the root. You wanna take the radican and set it greater than or equal to zero because that will give you all the values of x that'll make that value underneath positive. So solve this for, or zero, because it can be zero. Solve this for x by subtracting three from both sides, and you get x is greater than or equal to negative three. So that means you can plug in any number that's negative three or bigger, and you'll get a positive number or zero underneath here. If you was to graph this on a number line, here's negative three. You want all the values that are bigger than negative three, and negative three is included, so you'll have a shaded circle and then you'll shade everything bigger than negative three. And so if you wrote this in interval notation, it will look like this, negative three to infinity because negative three is the smallest number on this number line and it goes on to infinity. So your domain will be negative three to infinity. That's how you find the domain of the different functions in equation format. Um, so you have category one and one line of stuff. What I like to call one line of stuff, your domain will be all real numbers. Category two, if it's a fraction, then the denominator cannot be zero. So find the values that make the denominator zero. In category three, if it's a radical, you have to take what's underneath the radical and set it greater than or equal to zero so that you can get the values that will make the radicand positive.
Now you take a moment and you see if you can tell me what the domain of this function is. So what is the domain of f of x equal x minus 3 of x minus 4? You may need to pause it for a minute or you probably can look off the bat and tell me. So take a minute and see if you can find the domain of this. So this function is actually in the second category of fractions. And when you have a function in the category of fractions, then the denominator cannot be 0. So you want to take the values of x that will make the denominator 0. So take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So you'll add 4 to both sides. You get x equal to 4. So that means x cannot be 4. So your domain will actually be all real numbers except 4. So negative infinity to 4 union 4 to infinity so hopefully that is what you got and um, for some, any reason if you don't understand something if you have any questions make sure you include them in the comments below and if you haven't yet i'm sure you have already but just in case i'm gonna say it anyway go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get notifications whenever i drop new videos so thanks for tuning in